Yo, what's going on everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston, and today we are back for episode 2 of the Miami Marlins franchise, and today what you are looking at right now is like, I, you know, I don't even know, probably 8 or 9, just like trade proposal, trade idea, I don't know, type of things that I was trying to put together. Um, I really just want to run through some possible trades, uh, that be, I want to run them through you guys to see what you guys think. Uh, really the guys that I'm looking to possibly trade, I'm not necessarily going to trade all these guys or even any of them, quite frankly. But the guys that I've kind of put out there on the market are Logan Morrison, Giancarlo Stanton, Ricky Nolasco, and I think that's just about it. So you can see a couple Logan Morrison trades here. Um, I'll kind of talk about some of the deals that I kind of noticed or whatever throughout this video, but this one is for a few Red Sox prospects, um, and then this one is for Jorge Soler and Javier Baez. Um... Even though, I'm not really sure, one, I do want to keep these trades fairly um, realistic slash not too lopsided. I mean, I'll admit the Wei Yin Shen and Miguel Gonzalez for Justin Ruggiano deal was a little bit lopsided just for the sole fact that um, I, ended up or I ended up getting Wei Yin Shen. If I hadn't gotten Shen, that would have been a perfectly fair deal. Ruggiano for Gonzalez, that would have been fine. Um, so, you know, looking back on it, that's probably what I should have done, but that's all right. You know, shoot me over it. <laughs> so, uh, the deals that I did uh, come up with were Giancarlo Stanton for Zach Wheeler and Travis Darno. This is a deal that has been rumored uh, of recent. Um, Zach Wheeler would be a very good pitcher for us. I, he's projected to be a number two and number three type of guy. He would go along great with Jose Fernandez and Jacob Turner. We could really build our pitching staff around them for the future. And then we still have guys like Henderson, uh... Oh my god, I can't remember his name. Henderson Alvarez, I believe. Wow, I can't remember his name. I feel really stupid. Um, and then Nathan Eovaldi. So we kind of build around them. Uh, good base. J Justin Nicolino is further down in the minor league system, but he's still there as well. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, then there's the Giancarlo Stanton for Danny Holson and Taiwan Walker deal. Now, uh, Taiwan Walker is a projected ace. Holson, uh, kind of like Zach Wheeler, number two, number three. Um, this gives me more pitching than I really need. That's why I kind of prefer the Travis Darno deal because I get a catching prospect, which is something that I could use. Rob Brandley isn't too bad, um, but I do feel like we can improve over that. I don't know, maybe we can move Brandley to first base or something. We'll see where we go with him. Um, and then I think the other deals were... Oh yeah, I wanted to get Nick Franklin in that deal possibly too. He would be a good second base prospect. I'd probably move him or Donovan Solano around a little bit. I'd probably move Franklin to shortstop. And he kind of become my shortstop of the future. Now there was the Mike Old Jerks and Profar deal. That deal I kind of just threw in there. I don't think I would do that one. Uh, it doesn't really fit logically into anything that I've seen in terms of like trade rumors and anything like that. And if I do trade John Carlos Stanton, uh, I do want to do something somewhat realistic with that. Now the Logan Morrison deals. I don't know why Logan Morrison was drawing so much interest, but one of them is Yasiel Pu Pu. I can't pronounce that name. Yasiel Pu 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 Pu. Pu and D Gordon. Um, those are two guys that Gordon, it seems like the Dodgers have kind of given up upon, at least in my opinion, have given up on. Um, I, it just doesn't seem like he's in their plans for the future, so he's very tradable for. And Yasiel Pugh is, is stuck behind Carl Crawford, Matt Cavanaugh, or Ethier, so although I think that the Dodgers would trade, you know, Ethier or even Crawford if they could before they traded Pugh. Um, I, you know, I could still see that kind of fitting logically. The only thing is I really don't see, you know, I feel like I'd have to give up, like, maybe, uh, Morrison and someone else just to kind of make it fit, you know, in terms of not trying to do lopsided trades in this. Um, and then you also had, you know, same thing when you had Logan Morrison for Alan Webster, Matt Barnes, and Jackie Bradley. That was just, like, a ridiculous deal. I, I wouldn't do that. I'd, I'd throw in someone else or, or, you know, not take all three of those guys, maybe only one of them or something. So we'd have to see on that end. Um, and then as for the rest of the deals, I think the only ones left were uh, Ricky Nolasco for Trevor Story. And I think, what was it, Drew Pomerantz and Tyler Metzgeg, or maybe one was Tim Wheeler in there. I can't quite remember uh, what the deal with the Rockies, but the Rockies have a lot of interest in Ricky Nolasco, and not many other teams do. So I think if I do decide to trade Nolasco, it will be to the Rockies. They do have Trevor Story. He's a top shortstop prospect for them. He's only 20 years old. He's an A-potential, um, projected good power hitter. So that'd be nice, uh, good building block for the future. And then the last deal was the Miguel Olivo deal to the Rays for a couple of relievers. I could also get Chris Archer out of it, so I think I might do a deal similar to that because Chris Archer would be a good pitcher 
for our future. I don't see him being an ace either, kind of in our, in our future plans, but I could see him becoming a at least a piece for us. And if not, I think, you know, he could certainly make a good long long relief pitcher. So we could also get a guy like Kyle Forensworth or Juan Obedeo. We could do some sort of combination of those guys. Juan o Ovi, oh my God, I can't pronounce his names. Juan Obedeo, I believe, uh, formerly being Leo Nunez, who's a former Marlin. But anyway, those are just the trade ideas that I kind of threw in there. Let me know what you think. If you guys have any trades in mind that you want me to do, throw them in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. I'm always open for, uh, you know viewer feedback or whatever but let's jump into this gameplay Aaron Harang did get the start today he's going up against one of those guys we saw in those trades Zach Wheeler and Harang had a pretty good game you're gonna see he's gonna get I believe Lucas Duda to ground out to first base he did settle down after giving up those two runs in that one inning and overall Harang for a fifth starter had a very good day for us he ate up some innings I think he ended up going six or seven I think he worked into the seventh or he worked into the eighth I can't remember quite frankly but um, either way, it was a good start out of Aaron Harang. It's all I'm looking for, you know. He's not the type of guy that's going to go out and give you dominant stuff. You know, he's not the Aaron Harang of the Cincinnati Aaron Harang, I should say. You know, he is what he is at this point, and he's a solid pitcher. He's a good five for us, so I'm really glad we were able to acquire him. Um, Miguel Olivo is going to ground out. Two Rubens Ahada at shortstop right there. Zach Wheeler really had an extraordinary day. He's going to end up working into the 8th inning, but that is where things would go wrong for him. Donovan Solano is up, the guy that I think I'm going to try and build around as my second baseman for the future. I really like Donovan Solano. He has good plate vision rating, which means his batter eye is pretty big. So I really like that about him. I just really like Donovan Solano. Plus, it'll Polanco up now, another guy with a big plate vision rating. He hits that one back up the middle for a base hit. Solano will advance to second base, and Placido Polanco reaches first base. The great defensive specialist, the third baseman, who, once again, you know, I like having him and Solano at the bottom of the lineup. It's almost like restarting the lineup a little bit. You can easily put those guys 1-2, in my opinion, at least in this game. I really do like, I think, I mean, I think they're good contact hitters. Hecheveria, or Hecheveria is up now. He's going to end up sacrifice bunting. He almost beats this throw to first, but will end up being thrown out. So we get second and third with one out now, and we would end up pinch hitting for our pitcher. So that would be the end of the day for Aaron Harang, I believe. Freddy Sanchez is on now with the man we signed in the last episode, the 2-1 count. He's going to pop that one up to Ike Davis over at first base. Davis will end up fielding this one cleanly, and we will not be able to advance. So still second and third. Now two outs, and we will restart the lineup here as we get towards Juan Pierre. Pierre is up. Another really good contact hitter. What can he do? He hits it back up the middle for a base hit. That will score one run. Polanco is going to round third. He's being waved in. He is going to be safe. The throw was cut off, and they throw Pierre out at second, trying to extend that into a double. But the two runs do score, so we tie the game up at two. An exciting finish. Looks like we are headed towards in the top of the ninth here. I believe Bobby Parnell is on. Olivo is going to fly out to right field. The right fielder will bring that one in, and that will retire the Marlins at the top of the ninth. And as you can see, we're going to be heading into the bottom of the ninth with your score still tied at two. Scott Harrison, I believe, is now up. He's going to end up popping that one up into shallow right field, and John Carlos Stan is there to make the play. So we are headed for free baseball, extra innings, in the first gameplay episode of the Miami Marlins franchise. So Travis Darno up, bottom of the 10th inning. He's going to take that one into the right center field gap. Pudsednik is heading over there. He's going to pick it up and fire it in there, but Darno is easily in there for a leadoff double. So things are looking bright for the Mets. Can they drive Darno in and try to get a win here in the second series of the season? Justin Turner now up. He's going to end up being rung up looking on that changeup right there by the Miami Marlins reliever. So Turner goes down. Now there is two outs. And Daniel Murphy's going to take that one into left field. It will be fielded by Pierre. The weak throw home will be not in time. And the Mets are going to walk off with a W. I was so mad at that because, like, I hit the X button to throw home. I used the um, the buttons to throw the ball. And I hit it, like, as, as long as I could. And it somehow, like, reset to the weakest throw power. So I know Pierre doesn't have the strongest arm in the world. But if I got that full uh, throw power for him on that, man, we would have had him. We would have gone into the 11th. So Chad Qualls ends up getting the loss here. You're going to see Pierre's throw. It was kind of a lob. And Darno was able to beat that one. Not too easily, but, you know, he was able to get in there, and that's what counts at the end of the day. So, that's going to wrap up this video. We're going to get into um, the post-game stats here in a moment. You're going to see who the player of the game was. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how I'm doing with these MLB videos in terms of editing down the gameplay or whatever. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of new to it. I went through the same thing with NBA when I started doing 2K Association videos. So, don't worry. It's just kind of me feeling it out for now. I just edited down episode 3. That'll be out on Tuesday. I'm going to be posting three Miami Marlins episodes this week. 
So hopefully you guys are excited for that. That is pretty much going to wrap up this episode. As you're going to see the box score here, and we will move over to the New York Mets box score in just a moment. You can see it there. Travis Darno did get your player of the game. Anyway, that is going to wrap up this video for me. So I thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy, and so is out. Peace.